what is app automation in js in this video we are going to talk about cypress request command man so how to pronounce that uh, word requests ha huh. okay um let's get started so um we can use this command to send http requests um first i thought actually what are the request that is being sent is sent from the browser itself but that's not the case it's been sent from the back end now let's check the code so when you run the request method this is what's actually being executed it's calling cypress backend and uh, this is the method in the end you can see this is a promise by the way in the end we are emitting a um, what do you call that um, a shortcut web shortcut request or message now who's the listener right now actually we are in the driver package the one who's actually executing the script this is the client side by the way um, and the listener is shortcut.js now where is this right now we are in the server package so the client is sending a request to send the rec send a http request to some kind of a server and um backend backend will receive the message and it will send the request from the backend so that's why we are able to send cross origin requests using cypress request so that's something interesting let's get back to the examples so this is the first example this is a very basic way we can use request command we are sending a request to url so what's the method let's see when i execute this one you can see it's sending a get request so by the way this is a uh, sample save i'm running in the background it's going to uh, show me all the uh, all the request details so right now endpoint is any and um, method is get we are not sending a body and content is not defined now we can attach a request body like this as the second parameter I'm sending a JSON object. Um, let's see. You can see again we are getting a get request because we have not mentioned the request method right now. Uh, we are just passing the URL and some uh, request body. So uh, one interesting thing is it's automatically setting the content type to application JSON. It will identify this is a JavaScript object and what we need to send from the client is JSON in that case. So it's automatically set in the header uh, for us. So that's uh, kind of nice. By the way, it's not going to set the header for all the uh, data types and uh, you know stuff like that. So sometimes we will have to set the header manually. Okay, let's say we want to send a post request. What you can do is we can pass this uh, first parameter the the um, the request type and the URL when you save that you can see I'm getting a post request to this endpoint by the way there are many uh, supported request types in Cypress but mainly we are using get post put and delete with um, delete with um, uh, what do you call that rest services okay now well, let's say we want to send a body with the method to this url we can uh, pass the method as the first parameter and as the second parameter we are passing the url and as a final parameter we are passing the request body now when i say this one you can see save is getting all the details all right there are a few minor details i have to mention so i can set a partial url to send a request but we're going to need a visit command before that there so there should be a way cypress to uh, figure out uh, where to send this request to so if you have a re sorry visit command before the request it's going to take that as the host so it will send um what is the request to this host and this endpoint so when i save this one you can see it's getting um get command to this any endpoint now if you don't have a visit command what this method will do is it, it's going to check the configuration for a um, configuration called base url if that exists it's going to take that as the base url 
So those are a few minor details you need to be aware of. Now, if you need a, a little bit of uh, flexibility with your request, you can pass an object into this request method. Now, these are the other options available for uh, request method, and these are the default values. So let's go through each one of these. Logs is going to display the log here. If it is false, it's not going to show up in here. Let me actually show you that. Before that, I will have to um, set the URL otherwise. Three thousand any. So let's see. You can see the log is not there. If I set it to true, and we got the log. So the URL, we can pass the URL to this URL key. You can set the method. Let's say we want to send a put method. Now you can see service uh, service getting a put request. I don't want to talk about auth in this video. I'll take it in another video because I want to play with it more and get used to the uh, authentication methods, especially auth one and two. Request body. We can set a request body just like we did before. And so it's getting that. Now, Cypress is going to fail the test case if the status code is a failure. Now, let's see. Um, I'm going to send a request to invalid endpoint like this. And you can see test case has failed we got, because we got 404 as the response. Now, I can change that behavior if you don't want to fail the test case um, on this request. You can set it to false. You can see it sent the request and got back for 04, but it's not failing the test case. And we got follow redirect. We'll talk about that in the next example. I'm going to set form to true. You can see um, the the request body is changed to something like this from this uh, JavaScript object or JSON, and the header is URL encoded, so we are sending a form request. Um, so this way, easily you can send a uh, form requests. Gzip is a completion method. I don't know how this is being used in web technologies, so I'm not going to talk about that. Let's talk about headers. Again, I can set headers using JavaScript objects. Let's say, actually, let me change the body first. Let's change it to a string like this, and I'm going to set the. Let me actually send it. Send this one. So, wait, wait, wait. Form is to false. Okay, when I send this one, you can see content type is undefined uh, uh, in the request. So we will have to set the content type manually. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to content define the content type in the object. It's going to be text plain and the service getting the content type request header. Okay, now we can send um, query parameters. Again, we have to pass an object. It's going to connect it to the URL. You know, uh, let's say name my name so you can see the url has changed now it's sending these um query parameters like this okay now we can set retry on stress code failure so let's say if you are getting a first zero for response if this is true it's going to retry the same request again and again i do not actually recommend the, uh, using this one uh, because if it is four zero four it's four zero four uh maybe Maybe you have to, you know, wait for some thing to happen. Maybe that's the case. So in that case, uh, my recommendation would be to create different, uh, create a different endpoint in the application to uh, get the status of whatever you are looking for, and uh, use that to, you know, wait on something to happen. Okay, and uh, we got retry on network failure. This is a useful one. So. If the request is failed due to 
some kind of a network issue it's going to uh, try to resend the same request so um, it's going to retry four times otherwise it will fail so we got timeout now let's see there's a configuration called response timeout so this uh, request command is not going to you know use the regular what's that default command timeout is going to use response timeout instead now we can override this 30,000 um, wait time or response timeout in here uh, using this one let's say I want to set it to 2000 you can set it like this for this specific request so we got one option left that is follow redirect let's see let's say we are getting a redirect response i can set it to follow redirect so it will follow the uh, it will send another request to whatever the location sent from this ever now actually let me set it to false first and when I execute this one, you can see I'm printing out the headers. You can see I'm getting a location key in the header list, and this is the location or the URL. Now, right now we are sending a request to this testing API redirect, whatever this is, and getting back uh, a response. And what I want actually, let me show you that we are getting a 302 status code as the response so if that's the case if it is 302 or 301 um, that means um, the server is asking for me to redirect to whatever the URL sent from the server right now it's this location so if I set this follow redirect true it's going to send this request first and it will get back the 302 response after that it will pick the location from the headers and it will again send another request to that url so that's why uh, the server is getting another request to this specific endpoint so that's follow redirect okay now sometimes we have to set global um, configuration so this is not usually going to change you know uh, let's say or this not usually going to be changed you know stuff like that so we can create a go global object like this and we can destruct i don't know if you have heard of javascript uh, destruct syntax so we can destruct this global request configuration and uh, override method just the method in this object so when i save this one it's going to send a get request to um this endpoint the root endpoint because even though i'm using this global configuration i'm overriding this uh method here so that's why it's sending a get method instead of a post. So this is one way of handling um, global configuration for requests. I don't know if there is another um, something better than this. So this is what I'm using. Okay, these are the things you should know about Cypress request command. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.